Hey guys, Gordon Lawson today. We're gonna to be doing an epoxy hot coat on the deck of the 7.6 for my friend Angela. I've already taken the time to prep sand it all down. So after we laminated it, I wait for it to kick. Then I come in and I prep it down with 60 grit. I like the Rhino Locks production paper from Endasa that you can get at Fiberglass Florida. And I just kind of scuff it. I don't overdo it. I just take down the high spots and give it a nice clean scuffing. And then next, I'm gonna clean it up with acetone to get all the dust off. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take some paper towels and some acetone and just do a quick rub down to get all that dust off. Get a nice bond. All right, now we're ready to hot coat. All right, so the only resin I trust is Resin Research, and I'm over here with Sam Barker. He's the mix master. He's gonna mix up my hot coat for me, and um, we're gonna get this thing done today for Angela. So, what do you think we should mix up, Sammy, to do this hot coat today? Uh, we're gonna do 200 milliliters of the Resin Research Quick Kick Ultra 2 and 100 of the hardener. It's a two to one mix. Yeah, That's so just make doing. it easy. You don't have to weigh it. He's just gonna eyeball the mix and get it as close as you can and it'll kick properly. And then one thing we're gonna talk about with Sammy is additive F. Okay, we're starting off with eight ounces of the resin. Then he's gonna add roughly four ounces of the hardener. And we're going with the quick quick because we like it to go fast. Sammy had too much coffee this morning. A little shaky. A little shaky. So now we have additive F. This is a surfacing agent. It promotes uh, sanding and eliminates fish eyes and reduces surface tension and stuff like that. Some of the epoxy has issues with blushing and fish eyes. So this stuff eliminates it. And what we're gonna use is one milliliter per ounce of hardener that you use is the mix. But since it's kind of warm out in summertime, we're gonna double it so that the additive F has time to surface up to the top. And especially with Quick Kick, you wanna double it. So we have uh, eight milliliters. So people or eight cc's. So people ask me all the time, Sammy, how do you get your epoxy hot coats where they're easy to sand? It's all additive F. It's additive F. That's it. If not, it's gonna be tacky, you're gonna go through paper. It'll sand but this makes it way better. And when you mix, you want to mix real thorough and mix the sides and the bottom real good. And when you add it out of it, it's gonna um, look a little cloudy. So that's normal. And here you go, sir. So the first pour, I'm gonna do right down the stringer, making sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go right down. Maybe. We're gonna stretch this hot coat. We always mix more, so. You can always add more, that's it. The beauty of epoxy, you can add more, but I think I can make this work because I haven't even really done my cross strokes yet. So this is kinda the key to getting a nice flat hot coat. Give it a little side brush stroke and that'll fill in all your areas and then you can kind of get some off the brush. Right, Sammy, you don't want it dripping off the bottom edge. Right. Because that's and, just wasted. And Quick Kick's good for that because it's got a lot of body, so it stays put once you brush it on. It's a thicker formula. It's just one of our strongest. It doesn't move around like the 2000 series. Okay, so one, one thing that I do after I get the whole deck covered with the hot coat resin that's left is I paint underneath the lap here 
to make the bottom prep sand that much cleaner. Get it on the fin boxes, anywhere you think you're gonna be needing to sand the lap. Dude, we've nailed it, Sammy. Okay, now I'm just gonna let it set. We're not gonna kick up any dust or try to make it all pitted out. And what does it normally take, Sammy, before we can flip it? Usually with quick kick, hour and a half, two hours, you can flip it and do the other side. Where the fast might be two hours, two and a half, so. So we're gonna let this lay flat. We're gonna come back in a few hours, flip the board over, do our prep sand and then a bottom hot coat and um, she'll be ready to sand and ride. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bottom hot coat. The deck hot coat came out real nice. I did my prep sand along the lap and cleaned up the boxes. Same thing, I'm gonna clean up all the sanding dust with some acetone. Always wear my gloves, not just because of COVID. Okay, that should be good right there. Okay, so now we're gonna tape off the bottom hot coat because you don't wanna drip it around to your clean hot coat on the deck. So what I do is I start on the nose on one side, I go right under my line of prep sand. And just pull this out. Now, depending on how much edge you want, you wanna come up here and pick up the tail and start getting some edge up there. On a fun shape, you don't need too much. It's not like a performance board. But here's another thing that I do on the, on the tape off. I don't leave myself too much sanding work. And you'll see what I mean when I turn the corner here. I'm gonna keep the tape just about an eighth of an inch above the tail edge. I swear by this yellow tape from Fiberglass Florida. It's automotive refinish masking tape and it just sticks better. It doesn't peel off in little pieces when you do your hot coat later. And listen, sometimes with epoxies, you don't have the luxury of sitting around waiting to pull the tape. So sometimes you gotta leave it overnight. This stuff rocks. Okay, so I mixed up my resin and hardener for the bottom hot coat. A lot of people ask me all the time, what's the difference between a poly, poly resin hot coat and an epoxy hot coat? And if you, if you mix it right and you get your, your ratios just right, the two to one, you put enough additive F, they sand about the same. Now granted, poly sands easier and all that, but it's a more brittle resin. So these boards are stronger, they last longer. The resin's gotten better. So I prefer it, because here I am with no mask on, getting ready to do a board. And if we were doing poly hot coats, we'd both be buzzing right now. <laughs> so the first pour again, I'm gonna do right down the stringer, making sure it's nice and clean. It's gonna go right down. Like I said, I'm not gonna let this hit the floor yet. And if it does, I'm gonna catch it. And this is a 7.6. So we don't want to do a super thin hot coat on it because we're going to be sanding into it. And same thing as with the deck, we want to utilize all the resin we mixed up. We didn't mix up too much. You've got to kind of figure that out. That's something that takes time. I'm 
Now that we've got it all wet out, I'm just gonna kinda tune it up a little bit. And then the same process we used on the deck hot coat, we're gonna do on the bottom. We're gonna do the side strokes. Making sure we get that edge in there nice and full so we, when we sand it, we can get a nice sharp edge in the tail. And you get a little workout too. And you can see I even have some left over. So if you see any dry spots, or any kind of spots that look like it didn't get all the way full, this is what you need to look. This one looks pretty good. So one of the tricks I do at the end, just so it doesn't puddle up too much here in the tail with the tail rocker, is I usually try to level out the tail a little bit. It still lets it settle down in with the tail flip, but it doesn't get too puddled up to where it runs off the boxes. So I'm gonna leave this set for a few hours, probably gonna pull the tape in about three hours and it'll be ready to sand and get out in the water. Thanks for checking out our hot coats of epoxy resin and hope you learned something today. Go buy fiberglass flooring and get your supplies.